Hello everyone, Indro here and I wish you a very happy new year. And since it's new year, we have to create something new. And I thought about creating this artistic watercolor style Mandalorian poster. Well, I have been watching the two seasons of The Mandalorian back to back and I'm totally pumped up to create something related to that. Here we'll be using a whole lot of filters and adjustments so I won't be exactly explaining why I'm using those effects because the video can go pretty long but I'll be definitely showing you in details whatever I'm applying over here so that you can easily follow along and apply these effects to your own photo. So let's get started. Here we are in Photoshop and I have this base image to work upon. So I'll quickly show you the image size. It's uh, something around 2400 by 3600 pixels. And one thing I also want to mention is that because you'll be applying some watercolor style textures and brush strokes, we definitely need some custom brush and textures for that. For that, I have this Photoshop brush file and this watercolor texture paper which I created. You can get them, you can find that download link in the description section below. Now to load the brush file, you can simply go to file, open, look at the brush file on your file explorer and hit open and you can find that it's loaded over here in your brush panel. And these are the two brushes. So it looks something like this. I'll quickly hide this so that I can show you. So this is the brush. You can use any other custom brush that you want. And the second brush is a splatter brush, something like this. You can use different brushes, whatever you like. You can get a whole lot of brush from brusheasy.com. You can go and check it out. But if you're just wondering why this brush is behaving like that, it's because I have tweaked some settings like you can see here. I played with the shape dynamics, scattering, transfer and everything. So the brush behaves like a natural brush stroke, but that will be a topic to cover in some future videos. So let's go ahead with our effect. For that, we definitely need to cut out our main subject, which I have done beforehand because, you know, it's pretty boring. So you can use whatever technique suits best to you, like pen tool, quick selection tool, whatever you feel best, you can use it to cut out your main subject. Now, once that is done, we'll create a smart object out of it. So let me duplicate the cutout. I'll simply right click and select duplicate layer. I'll maybe rename it to subject. So here we have it, I'll drag it out from this group, I'll collapse this one just to keep things nice and tidy. I'll create one background color, let's take one solid color adjustment layer and select white color from that because it's a blank canvas, blank canvases are always white. Yeah, not so good joke. Alright, so we'll convert it into a smart object by simply right clicking and selecting convert to smart object and we are doing that so that the effects can be applied non-destructively. We can go inside at any point of time inside the effects, change them or even change our main image to something else and you'll be having a new effect altogether onto a new image. You know how smart objects play out, right? So we'll be creating two more copies of it and let's right click and select duplicate clear. Maybe we'll rename it as line art maybe give it a gray color because these are line art and i'll again duplicate this one right click and select duplicate and i'll rename it to real color correction let's color code it as green and i'll prefer to rename the subject as color art let's color code it as blue now i will hide these two layers but keep color art visible i can also hide our original group now let's add our filters starting with the cutout go to filter filter gallery and over here select cutout punch in values 8 for number of levels 4 for edge simplicity and 2 for edge fidelity click ok i'll just zoom in a bit so that you can see the image getting transformed then we'll use oil paint now here's the thing to note if you have photoshop cc 2015.5 and newer versions you will find your oil paint filter under this menu filter stylize oil paint but if you have photoshop cs6 or the first cc version which i think is 2013 you will find the oil paint filter over here and if you have anything lower than cs6 oil paint will not be there because it was not introduced and if you have 
CC 2014 and 2015.1. It was again decommissioned for some reason, so it's not there, but it was again reintroduced from CC 2015.5. It's okay if you do not have oil paint or for some reason oil paint is disabled for you, you can skip it totally, but oil paint will smoothen out all the jaggy edges that are getting introduced from application of different filters. So let's go ahead with it. Let's punch in values of 5 for stylization, 5 for cleanliness, 5 for scale and we'll keep the bristle little to 1. Make sure lighting is not checked. Let's click OK. You see, it has already smoothened out things. Now we'll boost the vibrance. For that, let's go to image, adjustments, vibrance. We'll crank it all the way up to plus 100. Let's click OK. Now let's add some brightness and contrast. Go to image, adjustment, brightness and contrast. Let's increase the brightness to plus 50 and we'll drop the contrast to minus 15. Then we'll go to shadows and highlights. For that, go to image, adjustment, shadows and highlights. Over here, enter a value of 50% for the shadows. Keep highlights to zero. Let's click OK. We'll need to again boost the vibrance. For that, you know what to do, go to image, adjustments, vibrance, add a value of 75 for vibrance. Now we'll add some sharpening, for that go to filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. Over here, add in a value of 500% for the amount. For radius, enter a value of 1 pixel, keep threshold to 0 levels. Let's click OK. You will see there is some more grainy stuff introduced over here. We'll smoothen things out again with the oil paint filter. Let's go to filter, stylize, oil paint. And over here, let's give in a value of two for stylization, two for cleanliness, two for the scale and one for bristle little. Make sure lighting is not checked. Let's click OK. So here we have our basic color art and now I will show you some magic. You remember the texture I showed you some moments earlier? I'll select the first layer. What I'll do is I'll take the texture, I'll drag and drop it over here. If it's not matching your canvas size, you can always resize it to whatever you feel like. Now we'll change the blending mode to overlay and there are some interesting things going on, right? It's giving us some watercolor paper-like feel. This is without it and this is with the watercolor texture. Great, let's proceed with our effects. So now we'll apply our line art. I have made the layer visible. With the layer selected, let's apply some more filters. Let's go to brightness and contrast by going to image, adjustments, brightness and contrast. We'll keep the brightness to zero, but increase the contrast to plus 15. Then we'll go to surface blur for that. Go to filter, blur and surface blur. And over here, enter a value of five for radius and also five levels for threshold. Now we'll go to oil paint filter, go to filter, stylize, oil paint, I had a value of one for stylization, one for cleanliness, one for scale, and also one for bristle detail. Now we'll go to smart blur, for that go to filter, blur, and smart blur. Over here, we'll keep our radius to three, and we'll keep our threshold to 25. Make sure quality is set to low, and mode is set to edge only. Click OK. Let's invert it by pressing Ctrl I or Command I on the keyboard and then we'll also apply some oil paint to smoothen out the edges. For that, go to Filter, Stylize, Oil Paint, add values of 2 for stylization, 0 for cleanliness, for scale keep it 1, for bristle detail also let's keep it 1, make sure lighting is not checked. Let's click OK. Let's add some brightness and contrast adjustments. Go to image, adjustment, brightness and contrast. Add a value of 5 for brightness and 75 for contrast. Let's click OK and change the blending mode to multiply to have those black lines on top of your color. And if you're wondering if you have some color distortion going on in the color art section because of the cutout filter that we applied previously, we'll use this real color correction layer to color correct whatever went wrong. For that, let's make a real color correction layer visible. Let's add our oil paint, go to filter, stylize, oil paint, add a value of 3 for stylization, 3.3 for cleanliness, again 3.3 for scale, 
and one for bristle little make sure lighting is not checked let's click ok then let's add some vibrance go to image adjustment vibrance add a vibrance of 100 and also this time add a saturation of 10 and now go to image adjustment shadows and highlights over here add a shadow amount of 100 percent keep the highlights to zero let's add some brightness and contrast go to image adjustment brightness and contrast add a brightness of 10 and contrast of 30. now again add some vibrance go to image adjustment vibrance this time also add a vibrance of 100 and also add a saturation of 10 then we need to add some more brightness contrast go to image adjustment brightness and contrast add a brightness of 50 and a contrast of minus 50 so what we are trying to achieve with this repeated brightness contrast and vibrance is that we are trying to boost the colors but maintaining an overall flat HDR look like toning down the shadows and the highlights but also boosting up the mid-tones and enriching the colors making them rich and pop so that it has some hand-drawn feel now we just need to change the blending mode to color maybe we'll reduce the opacity a bit to around 78 is fine i think so this is the core effect of our illustration effect on the main subject now we'll add some nice effects like those brush strokes and the splatters you can go all creative over here that's up to you now we'll quickly collapse these smart filters now since the smart filters you can at any point of time go inside them just double click them and change them to whatever suits best like it can vary from image to image and your image might need a different treatment this is what i found while experimenting with this image so you have the freedom to change it anytime because of the smart objects so with those collapsed let's select all of them i'm pressing ctrl g or command g on the keyboard to group them up let's rename it as core art Okay, I think the lines doesn't look that good on this razor crest, so I'll quickly add a layer mask. I'll take a brush and color black and paint on this line art just to get rid of it. As you know, if you paint with black on layer mask, it hides and if you paint with white, it shows up. Nice. Now we'll create the background. I'll create a new layer on top of this background. Let's rename it as background. PG should do good. Over here, I'll pick some colors. Just I'm going with my preference over here. You can do whatever you feel looks good to you. I'm just using a soft round brush, just dabbing some colors to fill this background. Yeah, that should be fine. Now you can also see how the watercolor texture is interacting with whatever we are painting underneath. You can simply turn it off to see how it's interacting. Cool, right? Okay, so let's rename it as BG Texture. We'll add an inverted layer mask. For that, I'm holding Alter option on the keyboard and clicking this layer mask icon. So I have a black mask and it has hidden everything. Now it's the time to get creative. I'm taking one of those brushes that I was showing earlier. You can use square brackets on your keyboard to control the size. Make sure you're selecting the layer mask, take color white and start getting creative. If you don't like anything, you can always switch it to black and paint to hide those areas that you don't like. Okay, we can also duplicate this one. Right click, let's select duplicate layer. Maybe I'll rename it to splatters. Let's click OK. I'll select the layer mask, fill it with black. So let's select our second brush, which is a splatter brush. Let's reduce the size with the square bracket keys. Make sure you're selecting color white and dab once or twice to get some nice splatters. Maybe I'll take it up on top of this core art so that the better also overlaps the main subject so now i'll add some more effects here and there just on the splatters and the background layers to make it look a bit nicer it's up to you how you take it forward from here let's create another layer let's rename it to white splatters i'll take color white 
and add some white splatters. I'll also go to this background section. I'll select this new layer icon to create a new layer. Let's rename it to white texture. Let's select the first brush and add some white areas just to make our subject pop a bit on the background. Now you can also try this. This is a cool trick. I think you'll like it. It's that over here in this cutout, I have the selection of the subject, which I can activate by pressing Ctrl or Command on the keyboard and also clicking on this layer thumbnail. You see this marquee, the selection just got activated. I can select this rectangular marquee tool. I can right click and select make work path. I can keep the tolerance to two pixels. Let's click OK. Now make sure the brush that you want is selected. Now select this pen tool. Make sure you are on the layer where you want the brush effect to apply. With the pen tool, right click and select stroke path. Over here, make sure from tool it's brush that is selected. You don't need to check simulate pressure. Click OK. And you can see it's automatically created a white kind of stroke all around that selected path. But it's too much, let's undo it. So what we'll do over here is we'll go to this brush. We'll go inside this brush settings. We'll go to the brush tip shape. We'll just increase the spacing all the way to 1000% so that it does not get that much dense. Now you can select the pen tool, right click and select stroke path. Make sure brush is selected. Let's click OK. You can do this as many times as you want. You can see that it's slowly adding some white tabs of paint over there, right? So I'll also do this uh, in a different way. Let's decrease the brush size to around 70 pixels. I will need the brush to space the way it was. I'll better select it. 5% should be good. Now I'll again select the pen tool. I have the path selected. I'll again hit stroke path. And I have this little white stroke all around Mando and Grogu. Now I can delete the path. I don't want it anymore. Let's right click with the pen tool and select delete path. So let's add the text. Let's select this layer. Let's create a new layer and I'll select the type tool and I'll click over here. I'm using this font uh, called DD stencil. I'll provide a link so that you can get it. Let's type in this is the way. Okay, so the color is white so you cannot see. Let's select something like this so I'll type in this is the way let's reposition it a bit let's take it down below the core art you can also change the blending mode to multiply and here we are I'll quickly tidy things up let's take the splatters to a group Let's take the background elements also to a group. Maybe I'll also put my logo over here and add some final color grading. Let's add a nice little logo. And let's add those final color gradings. For that, I'll select a vibrance adjustment layer by going to this new adjustment layer icons, select vibrance. Let's add a 50 value for the vibrance and 10 for saturation. Let's again go to this new adjustment layer icons. Let's select the brightness and contrast. Let's punch in a value of minus 25 for the contrast. And we can also play with the curves a bit. Let's go to the green channel and add a nice little S curve. So here we are. I think we should uh, tone down the green inside this background texture a bit. So let's take our brush. Let's take a nice soft round brush. Let's increase the size and paint some brownish color over here. All right, so we're done with it. Let's zoom in a bit and I'll show you how it looks up close. So yeah, that's it more or less for this effect. And if you think you have got some incorrect colors in your image, you can do this. You can simply create a new layer inside this core art folder. You can change the blending mode to color or whatever. And then with a brush, you can correct those areas. Like I think over here, it should be more dark. So I'll take some dark color and start painting over here. 
Okay, so I spent some more time and this is the final result I ended up with. So that's it for today. If you like this effect and use it in any of your future projects, please do feel free to share it with me. You can show it to me on my Instagram. And if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe my channel. That will totally motivate me to create more videos like this. I hope you like this one and I'll see you on the next one. Till then, enjoy creating.